Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I want to show you how I've made this little sweater dress for my neighbor's baby Gigi who is growing up, not so much of a baby anymore. Anyway, this is a size 3T, but I've also made the pattern again, but I wanted to turn the same thing and add sleeves and turn it into a little sweater with just some ribbing on the bottom. So we have that version. So you could kind of do either, either or. Still the same pattern. All right, so I am using Karen Simply Soft and I am using a H 5.0 millimeter hook. So let's get started with the collar. And we will start with six chains on our hook here. So the collar is just, it is back loop only single crochet. So we start with six chains and in the second chain from the hook, I will work my single crochets so that we have five. Then at the end, after I do my five, I will chain one and turn. And now I will work into the back loop. But first of all, on the first one though, I like to work underneath both loops. I'm finding that gives the neck edge just a little bit, um, makes it look a little bit prettier. But then these th three here in the the next three will be back loop only. And then the final one will be under the two loops. I think it makes the neck edge look just a little bit neater. So I'm working under both loops. Chain one and turn. Okay, I will do this for 56 rows. Okay, I have 56 rows here done. So I'll thread the starting tail and make sure you've left a, a pretty good length because we will sew the two ends together really carefully here. So I just like to insert my hook underneath those two V's, make sure, and then I start again. I just want to make it as even as possible. And I go ahead and work in a loop here, kind of like that, get that over there. So I'm just working underneath the starting chain, those other two loops, and then these, the two loops of the, um, that the stitch is made, just like that. Carefully and neatly as possible. Okay, almost done this last one, work under there, there we go, just like that, and um, you know, maybe I'll go back down through, or off camera, go back down and finish and put it out, but since we're filming here, let's get going. So I will return to my starting, or where I left off, and now what you will do, oh yes, first of all though, yeah, we wanna work one single crochet around at the end of each row so that we'll end up with 56 single crochets. So go ahead and count your way around and make sure you get 56 
single crochets. Worked one per row. All right, I have my 56 single crochets, one in each space around the end there, and I'm back to the starting. And actually, while we were off camera, I, I went ahead and wound this tail down here. I'll weave that in later. But I want you to slip stitch to the very first single crochet that you made, just like that, and then chain one, and now we will turn. Okay, but first, before we turn, I mean, before we get going, I want you to place some markers around the edge, okay? So this um, very first single crochet that we slip stitched into is stitch number one. So count that as number one. And then let's mark stitch number 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get a little marker in there. And let's um, mark number 19. So we'll keep counting. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Slip that under there. Let's do stitch number 38. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the last stitch will be number 47. So that was 38, 39, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, I like to go back and, and count and make sure that what we have is between the two shorter amounts, I want you to make sure you have eight stitches in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. And in the longer, we want to have 18 stitches in between. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. Great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then back here, remembering that this, this where we chained is a stitch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18. Okay, we're good. This is, this is our little collar here. And we're working upside down. I mean, you know, from the top down to the bottom. So here we go. Let's start one round of the griddle stitch, which is um, you know, alternating single crochet and double crochet. So right here, we are going to start in stitch number two with a single crochet. Then we will work a double crochet. And we will keep alternating this until we get to that first corner. Okay, here we are in that first corner. We just will continue the pattern, but we'll keep it all in the one in the same stitch. So we ended with a double. So we'll do a single, a double, and a single all in the same stitch. Now, if you have a hard time seeing your stitches when you go around again, Take the time to stop right now and mark the double crochet you just made because that is our new corner space. And we'll be working the three stitches into that stitch. So just in case, until you get used to it and you're not, you're not sure, just go ahead and mark that. So we ended with a single. Let's just start continuing our pattern. We'll start with a double.
almost to the corner. And however you end up, I mean, it, the important thing is just remember to continue the pattern, no matter what stitch you ended up on. So here we are, we ended on a single crochet. So now our pattern will be double, single, double in the corner. Double, single, double. And go ahead and take the, your marker and mark the single crochet if you need to. That becomes your new middle stitch. Okay, you're going to continue this all the way around. And I'll uh, meet you back after we join when we join the round and introduce the new color. Okay, we're working right up to uh, where we joined with a slip stitch. So we'll end with this double crochet. And now I will slip stitch and pull through. Just leave the white to the back because we'll come back around and pick it up. Now I'll pull through with the darker color, and this can be any color. Pull through, get that started, chain one and turn. And now into the top of that double crochet that we just made, we will make and start our pattern with the single crochet. Here's my um, corner where I worked the three stitches. So my middle stitch is a single crochet right here. So I'll continue the pattern and just work double, single, and double all into the same space. And I'll mark that so I don't miss it next time. Have that marked, the middle stitch there. Okay. Now we'll continue back around. I think you've got this. Okay, I've completed the round and I have one more double crochet to work in this last stitch right here. And then before I um, slip stitch and grab the white, I kind of like to pull that white back around and then insert my hook, you know, into the space, into that joined space. Ah, black yarn is so hard to see sometimes. There we go. And then I'll pull through with the white like that. And that seems to hide and give me a better join. Then I'll sing, uh, chain one and turn and start with my single crochets again right into the top of that last double crochet. Okay, so like I say, um, like I was trying to explain earlier, you're going to increase this um, for, if you want to, you know, do the three T size. Okay, so this is our back, the back of our sweater. I think we're increasing for 12 rows. 14, 14 rows, and you'll see this will grow, but take that shoulder to shoulder measurement if you need to. Let me show you on the original sweater. Um, see, we're gonna join down here. So I'm gonna be increasing and increasing. You'll see how this, this grows. Okay, well, I'll get to work and then I'll be back on here and show you how to join for those armholes. Well, how's it been going for you? I am back and I have worked 14 rounds of the griddle stitch. So I have it laid out here like this so that you can see this is what the joining looks like on this side. Here's our little neck and we'll be, you know, joining it to make the, the armholes. So we're gonna. I'm, I want to talk to you about sizing here for a second because um, I just make things to measurements, and I know now that when I make this style of a sweater, that if I add about three inches, 
I take the child's shoulder to shoulder measurement and on my little Gigi neighbor, it was 11 inches. And if I add about three inches before I join for the armholes, I get a nice, this actually falls down, you know, her shoulders are there. So this falls down onto a, a little bit down her arm. It's like a cap sleeve. So I know that that gives her enough room. Um, I also can look on the internet and you can also find chest measurements, but they are for, you know, the size that you need. They are generally in the, uh, ar taken around the child. So you have to take that number in half. So I just estimate though, through this part. And, um, but that's another way that possibly if you wanted to make this larger or smaller is that you can estimate and stop you know if you needed this smaller than a 3t you could stop probably on round you know 12 or around 10. I don't suggest this collar though for a newborn I think it would just be too big I would guess that the smallest size you can make this sweater would be kind of in the 12 to 18 month size now that's my best advice Okay, so let's get to joining for these armholes. So we have our joined round, the white, and I've chained one, and let's turn. Just go ahead and work your griddle stitch, which is single crochets into the top of double crochets, double crochets into the top of single crochets, and continue working that right up to that corner stitch that we've been increasing in. Okay, here we are, and my middle stitch is a single crochet. Now, usually we would be working a double crochet to continue the griddle stitch pattern, but I'm going to cheat a little bit on when we're joining. I will just work a single crochet into that single crochet, chain four, and bring that match up that next corner, which will be a single crochet, and I will single crochet into that one. And now continue with the pattern. So that means I will be working another single crochet into the top of that double crochet and then go back to the griddle stitch. That's the only time we're going to break, break our little rule for the griddle stitch is right there. Okay, now continue working the griddle stitch around the back of your sweater, or I guess it's around the front, and do the same thing when you get to that other middle stitch. Join for that armhole. So I've joined the round and turned, and now I'm working back that row and now just continue with the griddle stitch across the hole under the arm. So keep it double, single, and you might be working the single into that single crochet, that's okay. Just, that be that only that one time. And now if you can't, um, if these chains have tightened up too much on you, don't worry about it so much, you can always work around them as well. Just make sure you get four stitches here. Work single, work double, and then single, work the double. And now we're back and our, your pattern should work out. Singles into the tops of doubles. It's just that one in, the, in that little space right there. Okay. So work that around and now for the dress you will just work this griddle stitch um, uh, until your dress measures from the, however long you want it from the back of the neck of the child to just above 
the backs of their knees, I think was a cute length. For Gigi, it was about 17 and a half inches. So anyway, that's it. You're done with your dress. Of course, go back and weave in all of the ends. So the next part of the video though, um, I'm going to show you how to insert a sleeve in case you want to make this into a sweater. So let me go ahead and show you how to add a sleeve in case you wanted to make this a sweater. So you'll want to have the little V's facing um, away from you as if you just chained and turned. And you'll want to start with your color, come down in between the four stitches that, that made up the, um, remember those four chains that we did for the armhole? Just pull up a loop in somewhere in there, kind of between the stitches, chain one, and then also single crochet in that space because that's the stitch we'll slip stitch back to. Then you'll simply want to kind of fill in this space up to the first stitch of, you know, of the skipped stitches that we have. You'll fill in the space with some single crochet together. So it might be one, two, or three. It's up to you. Just fill in though that, that corner right there. Then start working. My stitch was a single right there, so work the griddle stitch, meaning singles into doubles, doubles into singles, all the way around those skipped stitches from the round where we joined for the armholes. So now we're going back and working the griddle stitch into those. Now I've worked my griddle stitch all the way back to that last stitch and now I will single crochet um, the two or three or four together all the way back over to that starting single crochet and I will slip stitch into the top of that single crochet and I will pull through with my white and start chain one and turn and start that griddle stitch again all the way around. So I kind of like to look ahead and make sure, you know, it, it's, it can get off just a little bit, but I wanna really make sure. So I know that that needs to be a double. So I'll start with my single, even though it looks like I have two singles in a row. Just important to keep the griddle stitch pattern going all the way around. Now after this round, I would definitely count the number of stitches that you've made so that when you go to make your armhole on the other side, you can match it and make sure you're making the same number of stitches around. And that's it. Continue this, um, the griddle stitch pattern until you need the uh, length of arm that you need for your pattern. So, and then I'll um, be showing you how to, to uh, do the wrist. So I'm going to um, start working on the, the little cuff here when I get to this white round. And I kind of always asked, I wanted to kind of match that up. So make your sleeve as long as you need. But to me, this looks, I mean, the baby needs some width to get their arm in, but I, I like to have a little bit of a narrowing before I work the wrist. So this time, for the round of single crochet that, we're, what, that will work, just all completely single crochet, I think every, I'm gonna do one, two, three single crochets, and then I'll work two together just to kind of bring that in a little bit before I start working the um, the ribbing. 
So, and that's totally optional. It absolutely optional. You can do, um, you don't have to do that at all if you don't like that look. So I've joined for the round, chained one, or have I chained yet? There we go. Chaining and turning for this. And now I will estimate how long I want that ribbing to be. Down here on the bottom, um, I think I did, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I did 10 out there. So I'm probably, you know, you can make it however wide you want. I think I'll go with, split it in the middle. I think let's do eight single crochets out. Mm -hmm. Let me see what that looks like. Maybe not. I think that might be too long for the baby. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I'll stick it, keep it the same as the collar. So here's working back down the chain. One, two, three, four, and five. That one is always tricky to get into. There we go. And then I'll slip stitch to the next space. Turn my work kind of towards me, I found is the best way. And then go ahead and work into the back loop of those single crochets. There's one. two, three, four, and you know what, when I'm out here by the wrist, I'm going to work underneath two of them. I think that'll give it a better finish. And go back. Work underneath both loops right there on that end. and then work towards the wrist. You can, actually I can work under these two down here too. I think that might make it look a little bit nicer. Up to you. Now I will slip stitch over two times. Turn your work. I think I'll go under both of those loops there. Make it a little bit easier on myself. Now work the back loops. All right. Keep slip stitching over two until the round is complete. And this is how I worked the bottom of the sweater with the exception of I did not do any single crochet two togethers to make it smaller. I just worked one single crochet into each space. And that's it. That's how you're going to do that. Okay, so I think I will finish this and I'll hop back on here and show you, well, um, how to combine and I'll let you see how this finished. Of course, Find more pictures on our website of this darling little sweater. Actually, as I was sitting here thinking about it, I have already showed you how to join for the neck area. And so it would be the same thing with the tapestry needle. You'll just sew the two ends together. So I think... From here on out, you've got it. You are gonna work the bottom of the sweater in the same way, do a round of single crochet, and then work this um, ribbed edging on it, ex with the exception of I did 10 chains to begin. And I still slip stitched two over between each row, and that kind of gave it this natural little shaping right there in there. So. 
Anyway, the wrist, I want it to be even more. So I still will slip stitch over two, but I believe that after I'm done, it will be cute and in there. So anyway, okay, I hope I've given you enough instruction to get this sweater underway. Be easy on yourself. The most important thing is to just keep the griddle stitch going, and I think you are going to have success. Here is the back of my sweater. I wanted to show you those joins. They look pretty good. I think you can't hardly tell um, what it looks like. So anyway, thank you for coming to Daisy Farm Crafts. We are just a mom and daughter team sharing our love of crochet. We don't claim to be professionals at all. We just love creating and designing. And I love showing you what I'm making. So thanks for coming by. We have a really fun group on Facebook. If you want to join and see what other people are making and using the same patterns, maybe just different colors. So anyway, um, you have a good day.